one thing that boys are finding is that they're reading much more than ever because of technology. So they're reading on screen all the time, but parents aren't calling it reading. So at every home and school I do now, and I do a lot, I get the lineup at the end, my son won't read. Is he 14? Yes. How did you know? Because the Bible says that. The Bible says between 14 and 20, there'll be seven fallow years. And that's 14 to 20. Trust me. So I say to the parent, and he's quit school at 14? Well, no. Oh, I'm sorry. He goes to school from 9 to 4? Yes. And does he read in school in every period? Well, yes. What do you mean he's not reading, for heaven's sake? He's reading for six hours a day. Give the guy a break. <laughs> yeah, but I want him to come home and say, Mom, I want to sit in the big chair now and read. <laughs> if he does, he's a social isolate. <laughs> Worry about that kid. Worry about the kid reading at five. That's what I do. I want him reading all kinds of other things, and that's why we invented newspapers. That's why we invented screens. That's why we invented handhelds. I won't tell you who was working on a handheld as others were speaking, but I know. Hmm. And I love this teacher told me in Newfoundland. She asked her grade one class in September, how do we communicate children? And they all said, texting. <laughs> <laughs> and they're six years old. And so there now are dozens of books saying texting is evil. Lots of professors going around, we must stop the computer. Of course, they're writing all their books on the computer. That's different. We're going to have computers for the rest of your life, so wake up and accept it and move into it. Are we going to have books too? I don't know. But we have electronic books, a lot of them. In America, 10 million Kindles sold in the last two years. My daughter-in-law was pregnant uh, with her baby delivered three weeks ago. My son and I bought her a Kindle for the hospital. She loves to read four or five novels a week so she could continue with the baby here and the Kindle here, the electronic reader. Who has a Kindle? <laughs> and what are you reading on it now? I was just reading a non-Kindle book actually in this class, but um, everything from Globe Mail to newspaper. Kathy was telling me that she read the, the paper and newspaper online yesterday, didn't you? Oh, every day. You read online as well? Yeah, every day. I want a real one. <laughs> we can dribble your sandwich on it. <laughs> Who's like me? Well, we're finished. <laughs> I was working in, in Bracebridge with a grade four class uh, with a wonderful teacher named Pam. And the grade four kids were doing independent projects or partner projects with laptops. She had the whole class with a project. She wrote Apple and got project. No, they were Acers, little Acers. And every grade four kid had done a, a social issues project with character building and all that. So I went around to visit each one. And this girl was doing, why newspapers must be banned at once. I love newspapers too. Well, we can't have trees cut down. We can't store the paper. We can't deliver. It's too expensive. They've got to be online. I said, well, I don't like them online. I don't like them in real print. Well, I'm sorry you can't have that, Mr. Booth. Get on there and find out if we can reuse the papers we have now and make newsprint out of that. Just a minute. It says here there's chemicals in the pulp and we can't do it. Get online and find if we can remove those chemicals by some way we haven't tried, like osmosis. <laughs> Says your Japan is working on something. Well, fine, I'll be back. Find out what it is. And <laughs> she's nine. It's thrilling. It's everything that the speakers talked about, authentic and real and powerful. So I get to two boys. They've teamed up. They're doing mining is evil. They're all social issues. I don't believe in any of them, but here they are. So I said, mining, yes, we found out about strip mining and danger and mining ore. And I said, oh, that's interesting. When you're 16, what's the first thing you guys are going to do? Buy a car. Oh, what about the car you made of? You got any ideas? Stuff like from mining? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what about plastic, sir? Plastic. Now let's see, what's plastic? Get on that, find out what plastic. Oil. Oh dear, that's a problem, isn't it? Um, what else? Get back to us, okay, Mr. We're busy. Okay. 
So I love the fact that we're necessary, that we're needed, that we're powerful. So it's not that the book is dead. I don't care what shape the text is in. You may read it online, you may read it on page, you may read it in a graphic text. It's the information, excuse me, it's the information, it's the, the images, it's the power of what we're reading, it's the meaning we're making. And I want those K's like those three little pig K's. I want all of us making meaning like that. That's the thrill. I'm working in a, a grade 10 class uh, independent reading projects in the library. They had 30 kids on, on computers in the library working away. And I went to each kid again, because that's what I get to do. I don't have to do report cards or parent interviews. I just go and visit kids. Those girls working away, I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm doing female pirates. Ooh, are there any? Well, there's pirates, you know, the Somalian pirates, Mr. Booth, but these is in the past. I'm looking at the ones from the 18th to 19th century. Oh, good. What he found out? There were a lot of female pirates, Mr. Booth, and I was thinking maybe, you know, pirates are like gang members today. They're excluded from society, so they collect together to survive, and they do all these things as ways of acting out what they haven't got in society. Oh, that's good, dear. <laughs> she's 16, and she's got a ring, and she's pregnant, and her school is wonderful. So I said, well, that's pretty powerful work. I want to read when you're done. She said, yeah. Mr. Ruth, could I go on with this for my university, female pirates work? Because you can see that girl, she wanted to be a pirate. Her life right now, her life was so out of control. I need to belong to something. I said, yes, sir, you can get a, you can get a, a degree in female pirates, yeah. <laughs> I said, you can get a whole doctor, but you have to go to York. Anyway, books aren't dead. They might look different. I think today we have uh, a p two parallel universes. We have the printed page and we have the electronic page. And right now I think they're like this. And whether it goes like this or like this, I think we're going to always have for in our lifetime both, but I think the dominant force will be um, electronic. But that doesn't mean it won't be books we love and care about. The nice thing about ebooks is ebooks are never out of stock. This is Margaret Rear's book she wrote about different libraries around the world for children. And in the Sahara, they bring the books by camel. How fortunate we are. We don't have to do that. How many remember the um, the mobile <laughs> bookmobile? Who remembers that? With good memories, mine are good. I actually dated the daughter of the guy that drove the book mobile. <laughs> that was in Hamilton, and I got all, all free books. Moving on. <clears throat> Mar is Margaret's new book out yet? It's called "I Go to School in a Chicken Coop." It's a true story of class that have to find a building where they can find it, and in this one area, that's all they could find. So we're so we, we even our most impoverished school has so much going for it. This was in a <clears throat> grade five class in Owen Sound, and the kids were looking at this uh, picture by Edward Bertinsky, one of Canada's most important photographers at the moment. And he went to China and called his book Manufactured Landscapes. And the kids talked about that picture. I watched her do it. It was on a smart board. And they, wa and they talked about it for 45 minutes straight. Their questions were so amazing. So think of text in different forms. Photography is an honorable art form. We can learn much from it. And that picture is so, when you look at that picture, it's so powerful. What are all those yellow jackets? What are those yellow houses? What are the, ro what, who are they? What's going on? The next picture, <coughs> look at these people, <coughs> where they are in these factories. And the change, the power in manufactured landscapes. They then did a manufactured landscape of their own town. They emailed it to me in a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in some other class, kids were copying out a note from the blackboard. Not a lot of use for the blackboard, you'll notice, in society. How many of you have wonderful blackboard writing? <laughs> I know, I do. I don't use it anymore. 
maybe they'll develop a reason for it. 